Hello Stratters, it's Creepy V and we are back for the finale of our month of Halloween. It's been fun, I got to play some decks, um, mostly for the theme, but honestly I found some of the decks really enjoyable to play and I hope that you guys did as well. Uh, and I'm very excited to play this deck. Uh, and I really wanted to pick the perfect thing for the last deck of this month. So I thought, what is my biggest fear? What scares me the most? Uh, and besides human interaction and love, it was cockroaches. And I despise them. Like, I will cry if I see a cockroach. Like, it, it, I can't stand them. Uh, but unfortunately, Magic only has, I think, one card about cockroaches. Uh, and so I couldn't really build a deck around it. But... We do have the second best thing. We have some insects uh, in the form of spiders. So we have Ishkana Graph Widow, and we're going to be playing Spider Tribal in EDH. So let's take a look at Ishkana. Uh, if you played any um, any standard around the uh, probably about four months ago, whenever Black Green Delirium was running around, uh, you're probably familiar with this card. Saw a little bit of play. Uh, more is just like a tech card, uh, because and a lot of people sided it to deal with decks that had a lot of flyers, uh, because it does have reach. But anyway, it is a 5-drop green, but it has black uh, in its um, ability, so it does count as a Golgari commander. Uh, so it's a legendary spider, has reach, uh, it's 3-5. And uh, when it enters under Delirium, we make three one one two spiders, excuse me, with reach. Uh, if you're not familiar with Delirium, basically if we have four cards in our uh, graveyard that are of different types, Delirium is active. Uh, and so when creatures enter or are on board with Delirium, they have different effects. Uh, and so finally we have her ability. It's an expensive one. Uh, six and a black target opponent loses one life for each spider you control. So I think you can see where we're going to go with this. Uh, we're going to try to have a ton of spiders as well as have our graveyard set up to have delirium trigger. So we're going to have some things to help us discard a mill and then some things to uh, help us create a bunch of spiders. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have a lot of your standard uh, black and green cards, but we stayed uh, completely tribal except for one card, which was Metallic Mimic, because it's just too good not to play in uh, a tribal deck. Uh, besides that, a lot of the cards here are picked more for theming and less for their um, competitive ability, so you could definitely uh, do some things to optimize this deck, but... Metallic Mimic here, just because it's so good. <laughs> uh, so we play some standard um, tribal cards like Urza's Incubator, Door Destinies, uh, Obelisk of Erd, Conjurer's Closet there, because uh, ETB ability. Uh, and then as far as the token doubling, of course we have the standard package of, where are they? Doubling Season, Second Harvest, and Parallel Lives. There it is. Uh, as well as we have a few cards that produce tokens. Where are you? Uh, I really should pull these out before I make the videos. Uh, spider Spawning. There we go. Spider Spawning. going to create a 1-2 green spider token uh, with reach for each card creature in our graveyard. Pretty, uh, card saw a lot of play whenever it was first um, whenever it was first introduced, but it just kind of died off. It does have flashback, which makes it uh, value town city, city, state, whatever, <laughs> whatever level you want it to be. Uh, where is it? I'm trying to remember. There it is. Arachnogenesis. Uh, we're going to create a, we're going to create X, 1, 2 green spider tokens with reach, where X is the number of creatures attacking we control, and we prevent all damage that would be dealt to non-spider creatures. Well, dealt by non-spider creatures. Uh, so we can make a ton of them if we know what we're doing here. 
so that is the deck essentially uh, and then just things to help us manipulate our graveyard like grizzly salvage uh, death bridge chant that sort of thing uh, we can set up delirium really quickly whenever we use these cards properly so Ishkana will be online fairly quickly um, other than that let's dump out a bunch of spiders the bad thing is that most of the spiders are not very great but it's a fun tribal deck so we're gonna make it work anyway so with all of that being said I will see you guys in the games alright guys we're going second I believe and we're playing against Hapatra so this should be an interesting match I'm actually going to try this hand it could definitely be better but we'll see how it goes if you guys don't know what Hapatra does she is a two drop Golgari commander whenever she attacks well whenever she deals damage to a player she uh, puts well she can put a um, a negative one negative one counter on a creature that can be itself or a creature on her side doesn't matter uh, I think we'll actually bottom that uh, doesn't matter she can put a uh, negative one negative one there uh, and whenever a creature gets a negative one negative one she creates a one one black snake with death touch I believe it's no it is a green snake okay I was close let's drop the swamp and I think we'll just go straight for the rampant growth put the uh, land at the bottom considering that we are gonna uh, accelerate with rampant growth. Um, we did have another land in hand. I felt pretty safe. We only have a couple of spiders to work with, though. I'd say that's my biggest concern. I'd like to get the bestiary down. I don't know whether my priority is the bestiary or the arena. Uh, so Hopatra now has her beautiful combo piece, which is uh, nest of scarabs whenever uh, you put a negative one negative one counter on a creature create that many one one black insect creatures uh, so you can definitely see where that's going to go this crossing grip is probably going to be used on that uh, because that is value city as I say so we have to be pretty careful here because some of our spiders are pretty small so those negative one negative ones can add up uh, let's go for the arena and then at some point we're gonna have to get rid of that thing with the crossing grip but getting some draw acceleration seems pretty good life crafters would have given us the ability to scry but I think uh, straight draw power might be good here drops the harmonize gonna take another two he does have the option to put the negative one negative one on Patra which yeah he does go for that I was gonna say I would because that nets you two creatures uh, and of course whenever you do damage then you can put a negative one negative one on one of those it will kill it but you get a creature back so and since you have two you're actually netting um, a creature explosive vegetation that seems really nice if we weren't taking all of this damage we play the signet we still get to three which gives us the ability to it's just we're missing a land drop right now so I think we have to go for the explosive vegetation I've never like played an explosive vegetation and been unhappy about it that normally does not happen we're just gonna grab two force will pass we will have a uh, pretty good handle on our land base and plenty of mana to work with our we're only at one card type right now so that coat of arms has to go I know that I said that I was worried about the nest of scarabs 
the nest of scarabs is now absolutely nothing compared to that coat of arms. If we had access to a commune with the gods, that could be pretty good. Kroos and Grip seems good. For sure. Let's drop the signet. And we go... I mean, I, I just want to go straight for the Kroos and Grip, honestly. No, oh, I mean, not the... Um, well, I guess, yes, the Kroos and Grip, but targeting the uh, Coat of Arms. So let's do that. We could wait and do it at instant speed, but I'd like to go ahead and do it now, just to make sure that our opponent doesn't have a chance to protect it with anything. I can't really think of anything that he could protect it with, but whenever I think about things like that, I end up being proved wrong. Uh, Commune with the Gods seems really good here, but... Two cards in our graveyard. Or bestiary. Destroy target equipment. That could be better for us. Uh, I think we need to... There is just no good solution here. I'm sure that you guys are infuriated with me because I'm sure that there's better plays that I could be making here, but I'm very afraid right now. That coat of arms had me on edge. Our opponent does not have much on his board and has not played much. But as you can see, Hapatra with a nest of scarabs is pretty good just by herself. Wickerboro comes down. So we are looking at a pretty strong little army here. So this one comes off to destroy a target artifact. Okay, so... We lose our life crafters. It has to have one. Okay, so... Now he puts the... Counter onto Wickerboro. Taps. Blows up Phyrexian Arena. If I had to guess. If I was a betting man, I would say that he's going to destroy the Phyrexian Arena. Yep. Alright. So we have four card types now. I really do appreciate that MTGO shows you that. Don't have any equipment to destroy. Commune with the gods seems good. So let's tap and play it. So we have Giant Spider and Horn Reef. Don't have anything with flying to worry about. So I guess Giant Spider. Let's actually pull up our graveyard here. We lost out on a few good things there. But nothing like tragic. Well, I think it's commander time. Two, three, four, five. Actually, I want to undo one of those and make it like this. So Ishkana will trigger. We'll just go ahead and always yield to this. And now... I wish that we had one more and we could have gotten to Ashnod's altar. This is an interesting matchup. Two token decks... Uh, with varying degrees of scariness. The fact that the deck, uh, that the snakes have death touch, she does as well, if I remember correctly. No, I don't think she does. It's also interesting because a lot of commanders tend to be male. Uh, and we have two female commanders going head to head. So pretty cool. Pretty progressive. 
So which one of these are we going to blow up? So Blight Sickle not doing much. The Lightning Greaves on the other hand is a problem. Well, let's block what we can block safely first. And then block the Wicker Burrow because I don't want to take five. Oh boy, we're looking at a very scary board, and I don't really have a board wipe in this build. I probably should. Um, I'd like to have some sort of life gain. That'd be pretty darn helpful. Let's go boom, and boom for Ashna's altar. I mean, I guess we just dump our hand of spiders. And do so by sacking one of these to make it a little bit easier to do that. We could actually fetch something from the discard, but I don't know really what... I mean, the Croson Grip, yes. I think we have to go for the Crossing Grip with the Nyx Weaver. Problem is, yeah, we will be able to do it. It's just we're going to have to lose creatures. So then, Ashnod's Altar, Crossing Grip. Boom. And now we can't play anything else. So we are going to lose this one. Let's see. I can't count. So maybe we won't. Just that would have to be a priority. Like obviously that was really stretching our play. And I could have dumped more spiders. But. I mean. That thing is just nothing but value for him. So we get a whole lot of everything. What does Loam Dryad do again? Okay, just a mana dork. Here comes a whole cavalcade of attackers. So that's six, nine, ten. So sixteen. So technically, I can eat all of this damage. But do I want to? So now Ishkana is going to get a counter. We got a top deck, something pretty good. The only thing I can think of is token producers, and that is not a token producer. So, we are finished. I enjoyed that match though because we got to see a lot of Hapatra uh, and I've wanted to play her on the channel for a while so if you guys are interested in seeing a build of her let me know uh, because obviously it, it does pretty well well that ended pretty quickly so let's try and get another one alright guys recording software freaked out for a second uh, but we're going first I'm just gonna drop the forest here decided to keep it we had two forests uh, and a pretty decent hand I'm gonna hold off on the traverse uh, our opponent is playing Erebos. Uh, I actually just had to deal with an Erebos in the last game, so I'm slightly, slightly irritated with Erebos. 
Um, I really don't want to miss a land drop next turn. So I'm just going to drop the Traverse early. I know I'm a terrible player, but I don't want to let him get going before I get a chance. And also I'd like to have a Swamp, uh, because generally a mono black deck is going to play something like an extra planar lens, uh, and I'd like to capitalize on that. You might not considering that he's making all of my lands swamps. Alright, so terrain generator coming down. Alright, so this is a 5 drop. So I think we just go right for Descendant's Path for right now. Uh, obviously we won't get a trigger, but it'll be on the board. Could cycle the Jungle Weaver next turn. Uh, not the best play in the world, but it does put a creature in the discard. Ball Coffers. So, going to be making a good bit of mana for himself. Well, Will. Right now he's just at 3, so he's pretty much just breaking even. But So, nothing to hit with Descendant's Path. Would have gotten Door Destiny, so he wouldn't gotten anything out of it anyway. Uh, so, Phyrexian Arena. Or Frostweb Spider. I think we need to go for the Phyrexian Arena because I don't want to miss any land drops any more that we already have uh, especially when our opponent is sitting on a terrain generator, Cabal Coffers, and Urborg uh, he's pretty set up It's going to be an interesting matchup because I can't really think of anything that his deck completely shuts us out of doing, but going up against Mono Black is always scary. Our deck is kind of slow and grindy, which can sometimes be played to their advantage. So it doesn't matter with these guys. Juvenile Gloom Widow. So we could have gotten a hit there, but I think I'd rather draw an extra card right now. Get into a Gaia Reach. I think I'll just go for the Forest right now. So sitting on 4 mana. Let's just go for a frost web. And then we'll at least be in a position where we can hopefully hit something with Descendant's Path next turn. We are going to be able to block the Burnished Heart safely. But of course he's probably going to be inclined to just crack it. generate six mana so he is still just breaking even at this point or no I mean not breaking even at all uh, cast Erebos so with this amount of mana he can certainly draw a lot of extra cards uh, he can of course cast a lot of cast for X spells that black likes to do hold back the burnished heart We'll let the Descendant's Path go first. Ooh, hit a Forest, Arachnus Web, and a Penumbra Spider. And it dies, it creates the 2 4 rate. We can get to 5 mana this turn. I'm somewhat inclined to play the Obelisk Avert here. 
because nothing that we have is really that exciting to play. I think we're going to do that. Well, what is the cycle for? It's just a draw trigger. Okay. So, Obelisk of Erd tapping the frost web. We're not exactly opening ourselves to huge damage going against this burnished heart right now. So, we're going to call Spider. I'm not going to boost up Elks. Let's try to make our. Spider is a little bit more of a threat. I'm probably going to look into cycling that jungle weaver unless we draw a land, in which case, definitely going to go for the death bridge chant. Liliana. At least it is not the one that I'm really afraid of right now. That's the one that searches out swamps and target creature loses X for X. Okay. Out of all of them that it could be, that one is not the worst, but Alright, come on to send this path. Let's hit something big. Alright, we did. Well, I wouldn't say big, we hit an obelisk spider, but at least we hit something. It is a pretty nice 3-6, so... This is where the number of creatures... attacking. I really want to get rid of this. I can do 3 damage to it, but it is not bad. I think I'm going to go for the death bridge champ before I swing. Should have just done all of these, but and this should, I emphasize, should get us to delirium. Uh, so we'll just always yield to it. If I had to say what I was most afraid of right now, I'd have to say it would be a Bajuka Bog. Because I could definitely see him playing it. So she has to do minus three. So we're going to let Frost Web try to uh, slow that down at least. You don't normally see a frost web spider swinging in for big damage. Oh, I mean, not big damage, but being a 3-5 is pretty impressive. That's Obelisk of Erd for you. Cracks the burnished heart. So we knew that was coming eventually. Kind of cool to see Obelisk Spider. This card was so good in Limited uh, whenever our devastation came out. Oh man, he's copied the Cabal Coffers. And goes for the gauntlet of power. Oh my good lordy Jeebus. Well, our opponent can cast anything. <laughs> uh, so all of his swamps are going to tap double now. He has Cabal Coffer, two Cabal Coffers out. Uh, he's putting a lot of swamps into play. The big thing that can happen here is that even if he does not have cards to kill us with, he certainly can draw a lot of cards using Erebus's ability. Yogmoth will. What all does he have in discard? It's Burnished Heart. 
A sign and blood night's whisper. So nothing crazy, but there certainly can be crazy things put in there. He could search out a lot of a lot of cards with burnished heart. Exile's night whisper. Oh Lord. Beseech the Queen. Nerf Miles Disc. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's a good play for him. I would have imagined him searching something else, but... Up to 9 mana, that'll be 11. So, Gary, the Grey Merchant, comes down. So Erebos is a creature now, uh, and he is a 6-8 creature to be uh, more, more precise. question is, do I want to block with Oblix Spider? Uh, and I don't know if I do. Disciple of Bolas. Gain X life and draw X cards where a creature's power. Okay, so eats Gary. But that means that Erebos isn't a creature, at least for right now. Our opponent, for all of the things that he's done that ended up uh, hurting himself, he is sitting at 30 life now. Uh, which means he's got plenty more life to use with Erebos' ability. Pass his turn. We're going to go Arena. Descendant's Path and Deathbridge Chant. So make sure we always yield to that. We get back a second harvest. That could be quite good. Especially with that Parallel Lives. There's certainly a lot of good things happening right here. How much is this tapping for? It's tapping for two. That's right, because of you. I would love to be able to cast our commander and parallel lives or something like that. We could stop the burnished heart from being able to sack. That doesn't do a lot, but it is something. Or we could sack the jungle weaver. Yeah, so, but these can tap for black and get two out. Okay. So, yeah, we might be able to, actually, given that. Two. And that casts our commander, but we want to have some of this fun stuff out first. Parallel lives... One, two, three. Boom. I uh, will go boom. And boom. Getting out our Ishkana. Which this certainly doesn't bring us completely out of the hole yet. We've got a long way to go. But getting six tokens out is not bad. I'm actually going to swing with the obelisk spider now. And go after the lily. We are still staring down the fact that our opponent has the Nevermise disc. And overall, he is not losing much when it comes to this. Compared to what we're losing. Which is just about nothing. Though, I mean, everything. What he loses is just about nothing. But 
if I'm in a position where I can force my opponent to make decisions like that, I feel better. And honestly, if he wants to get rid of that gauntlet of power, it's probably a good idea for us. So this is pretty much just a cat and mouse game where we decide whether or not we can manage to force our opponent into doing something, which uh, is almost always your goal in magic. Taps never mind his disc. Oh, that doesn't destroy Lily? Oh yeah, I guess Lily isn't listed as a type, considering that Nevermind's disc was around. I think it was printed before Planeswalkers were a thing. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so there is a thing. Probably gonna dig for like a Swiftfoot Boots. Or a Lightning Greaves to let that thing attack us this turn. It's a Graveborn Muse, though. Keeps drawing. I, I feel certain that that's what he's looking for. Or it could be Lash Ryan. What all does this thing give it? Moves it over. So, yeah, he just needs to give it haste. And how did he give it haste? Oh, yeah, it can give itself haste. Alright, well, we <laughs> that didn't work out so great for us. Uh, that was a rough one. <laughs> what did we have coming to us? We got a message from our opponent. Uh... I always do that too late. Uh, we had Tangle Spider coming to us, Explosive Vegetation, nothing that was going to be an answer to our problem. Alright guys, well we've made it to the end of the video. Uh, I definitely want to thank you guys for watching. I've enjoyed this deck so far. Uh, we didn't do so hot with it. Uh, definitely need to uh, evolve my playstyle for the deck. It's a little bit different than decks that I normally play. Uh, and we have to accept the fact that spiders are not exactly the strongest tribe in magic. Uh, I would love to see them get more support, but um, as of right now, we are dealing with uh, not-so-great creatures being on the board to uh, trigger our token generation, which is not a great strategy to operate off of. Uh, but in the right matchups, we may be able to do some damage. Uh, hopefully we will see that happen in the next video. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. I enjoy this so far. Uh, but time to show. If you guys enjoyed the video, I appreciate it if you've watched it this far. And please be sure to leave a like on the video. It shows your support. It's a pretty awesome thing to do. And please subscribe so that you see my videos as well as all the amazing videos from the wonderful people that post videos on Magic Gathering Strat. We definitely do appreciate you. And I will see you guys in the next video.